So, have you ever wondered what would have happened should the protagonist be removed from the anime, at least for one season? No? Well, neither have I until I get severely drunk, don't do it at home kids, and that idea just hit me. Then I was faced with a different conundrum. Which protagonist should I eliminate? Yugi? Well, he has a backstory and the entire series revolves around him. Without him, none of the duel monsters would have happened. You say? Well, that's a fine idea, but I couldn't pinpoint an event in which you could have taken him out. Yuma? Well, just take away Astral and he's a nobody. Yuya. The situation with you is just like with Yusei. Yusaku? The series haven't ended yet, at least at the time of writing the script. Maybe some other time. Jaden. Yes. Yes, 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 Jaden. There's a perfect situation for him to be eliminated from the story for at least the first season. So, let's try it. What would have happened should Jaden have failed Dual Academy practical exam? It was a very hot summer day at the Dual Academy practical exams. The last examinee to arrive was Jaden Yuki. He was late and the staff was considering not letting him participate. However, after some scolding from the Chancellor, they let him duel. You could say he was in for it, because his opponent was no other than the chair of the Department of Techniques, Dr. William Crowler himself. Not to mention that the dear doctor was using his personal deck, just to teach the kid a lesson. The duel starts and proceeds like in the anime, until turn 4. Crowler draws. Ancient Gear Golem then attacks and destroys Winged Karibo. Due to Winged Karibo's effect, Jaden takes no battle damage from this battle and any battle damage this turn. Jaden then activates his phase down, Hero Signal, to special summon elemental hero burst Tenetrix from his deck in attack position. Crowler then sets a card phase down and ends his turn. Jaden draws Skyscraper. He activates the warrior returning alive to add Avion from his graveyard to his hand. The normal summons Avion in attack position, after which he activates Polymerization to fuse Avian and Burstinatrix to fusion summon Elemental Hero Flame Wingman in attack position. Jaden then activates Skyscraper. Now when an Elemental Hero battles another monster whose attack is higher, it will gain 1000 attack points during damage calculation only. Flame Wingman attacks Ancient Gear Golem. Upon attack declaration, Crowler activates his Phase Down card. Zero Gravity, changing the battle position of all face-up monsters on the field. Jaden then ends his turn. Crowler draws Ancient Gear Soldier and proceeds to summon it. Then switches Ancient Gear Golem to attack position and attacks Jaden's Flame Wingman with Ancient Gear Golem, dealing Jaden piercing damage and finishing the duel using his Ancient Gear Soldier. After the duel, Crowler leaves the arena, telling Jaden to try again next year, and better not be late. Afterwards, most of the events of the first half of the season unfold as they did in the show, with a few exceptions. Since Titan was not hired by Crowler to come to Duel Academy, he doesn't play a role in this scenario. Chamley drops off due to his father influence and starts helping with the family business of making hot sauce. Chaz doesn't leave Dual Academy, so he doesn't travel to North Academy, meaning no Jamas and no Arm Dragons. He plays his Fire Focus deck and he'll later swap to BWXYZs. The school duel between North Academy and Dual Academy is between Zane and Za. Zane obviously wins without breaking a sweat. With Chumley's departure and Jaden not being there to lean on, Cyrus had to grow as a duelist, beating Jinzo, the duel giant, Damon, Blair, and Dimitri. Twice! He's still not the best, but his improvement has been noticed. So we're resuming the story in episode 29. The start of the Shadow Rider arc. Chancellor Shepard calls the seven best duelists in the Academy to his office, those being Zane, Bastion, Chaz, Alexis, Crowler, Banner, and Cyrus. Shepard relates to all seven of them the story behind the sacred beasts, the spirit gates, and gives each of them a spirit key. That evening, Alexis decides to pay Cyrus a visit, mostly because she thinks the Shadow Riders will attack him, well, due to him being the only sniper red when it comes to the key holders. Being in the lowest rank of the dorm makes him a perfect target for an attack. When she was opening the door to Cyrus's room, she was suddenly transported to the inside of the island's active volcano. She's now trapped in an orb of lava. She finally notices Cyrus standing on a platform of light. A dragon made of flames flies from the lava and crashes onto the platform. Enter Night Shroud, the first Shadow Rider. Night Shroud reveals his desire to collect Cyrus's key. Therefore, the little guy is challenged to a duel. However, it's not your everyday duel. This is a shadow game, in which the loser's soul will be trapped in a blank card. Oh, there's also 
kind of, sort of a time limit, since the orb of lava seems to disintegrate with each passing second. Without the slightest bit of hesitation, Cyrus takes his dual disc and gets ready to duel Night Shroud. And that's the moment we're going to leave things be, at least for now. So, how do you find this scenario? I have to say, removing Jaden from the first season had much greater consequences than I originally imagined. However, when you look at it closer, you'll notice that Jaden was the focus of nearly every episode of the season. Without him, some characters were forced to grow, while some stayed the same. Anyway, what do you guys thought of this? Do you think Cyrus has it in him to win the duel against Night Shroud? Leave your thoughts below, and, well, see you next time!